Hi, this is Steve, V6WZ. Let's talk about packet and RBN CW spots. I'm often logged into the KST low band chat room, and uh, occasionally I've been asked, uh, hey, what frequency are you CQing on? Uh, I've always been a bit surprised about that because uh, today there's no reason not to know uh, where virtually anyone in the world is calling CQ within 10 seconds of their first CQ. And that's because of the RBN network. And that's what I want to talk about today. And also integrating both RBN spots and regular cluster spots. For, uh, you know, I've also noticed when calling CQ that if I get spotted on the regular, you know, the main regular packet cluster, I often seem to get more customers. So again, this seems to support uh, and indicate that there's still a lot of guys out there that aren't really familiar with uh, how to use and, uh, the RBN spots. Hey, listen, you know, I know there's going to be guys out there that perhaps uh, aren't believers in, uh, you know, the packet cluster in general or RBN spots. Well, you know what? Look, that's OK, but I'm afraid the cluster packet spot ship sailed decades ago. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's a great resource to uh, both enhance the hobby and, and really promote CW uh, activity. This is a display of the Flex uh, Smart SDR software. This is the radio I use mostly. And uh, it has the ability to spot both uh, and, and post both the regular uh, packet as well as my RBN uh, cluster spots uh, right onto the radio interface. In fact, you know, I can just click any spot and QSY to that frequency where that uh, station has been spotted. Uh, I don't really want to talk specifically about the, the Flex per se, but how do I get these spots uh, aggregated and all brought together? Well, I use a program called Logger32, and this is kind of the, the, uh, the, where, where most of my spots uh, uh, you know, flow through. Uh, and you know, the, most logging programs will be similar, whereby you, can, you have your regular cluster window, but then you can also have what are called band maps. And I've got, like for example, on the left here, this is 40 meters, 160 meters, and 80 meters. So I have every band uh, with, with the current spots for each band shown. And I can click these, of course, and, and what, what it does does, which is great, and again, most logging pros will do that. It'll immediately populate the uh, logging window, and since it's connected uh, through CAT data to the radio, it'll QSY the radio, uh, the radio to that uh, frequency. But how do I get these spots into uh, the, my logging program? Well, of course, you can connect directly uh, using a Telnet packet node and uh, import the the, uh, the spots into the logging program. But what I found to be especially uh, helpful, and this is what I want to talk a little bit about here, is what's called a VE7 uh, uh, Charlie Charlie cluster program. I'm going to talk about this because this really gives you a lot of flexibility to uh, import both regular packet spots as well as skimmer RBN spots. If you just Google VE7CC cluster, you'll uh, immediately be taken and be able to find the CC user page and download the program. It's freeware. And what a great program that Lee V7CC built. I've been using it for years, and uh, it really is a great uh, resource and a great program for filtering all of my spots. I do it this way because, I mean, some logging programs can do a lot of this filtering too, but, but this way uh, I will just only need to access this uh, cluster pro uh, program, and uh, if I'm using N1MM or my own logging program, I'm, I always know that I'm uh, filtering and bringing in the spots I want. Uh, zoomed in here, you can see under settings there's something called, you can toggle, uh, you know, lots of selections here, but one of them is skimmer. So you select that you do wish to include uh, the skimmer or RBN spots. In this case, I use my own skimmer spots. I, I run my own uh, skimmer program. So this way, everything is filtered the, the way I want it. And in fact, speaking of filtering, you know, there's lots of other options where you can select countries that you may want to reject. In other words, don't include certain countries if they're sending the spots uh, based on continent. Some guys I've talked to, they say, well, you know, heck, I only want to see skimmer spots, especially, or any spots from North America. The idea being that, well, if they're not coming from North America, then I probably won't be able to hear them. Well, I just don't agree with that myself. I mean, I want to see spots from everywhere, including Europe, especially Europe, for example. If I'm working DX on 160 meters, I want to know if a guy's calling CQ anywhere in Europe, if I'm gathering together EU, uh, European spots, skimmer spots, I know that I'm going to see that spot immediately and know that he's at least there. And then I'll uh, decide myself if I can hear him by going and having a listen. It's also great to know that there's some guys in Europe calling CQ on specific frequencies. 
so that I can avoid those frequencies if I plan to call CQ. It's uh, just a great resource for that too. Anyway, once I've got all my settings the way I want, uh, then what I'll do is there's a configuration tab here where I'll just say, okay, ports, uh, you know, where, where should the logging program go to find the spots coming out of the CC user program? In this case, I've defined a custom port, 7200. So in my logging program, I just say go and uh, uh, get my spots from uh, port 7200. So by the way, I thought I would just talk about uh, what are skimmer spots for those that haven't really uh, followed the, the development of it. You know, oh, over a decade ago, a fellow named Alex, V3NEA, developed this great program called CW Skimmer. It's just amazing. Uh, basically, it uh, takes the um, output from uh, usually an SDR of some t uh, sort, and uh, basically, in fact, this is live right now. It'll um, it'll take the code copied, and will literally it's got a built-in decoder, and it'll decode, and it's designed such that uh, it, if uh, if and when you have a call sign combined with CQ, it'll then get sent to the uh, RBN network. Uh, in fact, you know, during <laughs> you know during a contest, these things can be real busy. Here's what uh, here's what CW Skimmer can look look like uh, during uh, during a contest. The this particular program then uh, kind of was grabbed onto by uh, again about a decade ago by two guys in the beginning N4ZR and PY1NB, and they developed something called the Reverse Beacon Network. Essentially, what they did was they they reckoned, well, hey, how about we get people all over the world running these skimmers and then uh, posting their spots effectively, like posting them like a, like a packet cluster spot, and uh, then they developed the program that aggregates all that. I'll show you what that looks like. Since I run my own skimmer node, I thought I'd just show you what it looks like and how it's set up. This is just a photo showing uh, two of the skimmer radios that I use. The one is the QS1R. It's a bit of a legacy SDR, but it's uh, especially uh, well integrated into the RBN network because I can skim uh, nine bands uh, simultaneously with this radio. It's connected to a Wellbrook uh, amplifier and a 30 meter loop uh, out, in the, uh, out in the forest. I also have an RF space SDR IQ single band skimmer and I will often skim 160 meters using my uh, beverage uh, uh, antenna system. And the way these work, in fact, this is a, a single band skimmer. I'll use the regular skimmer, CW skimmer program to skim 160 meters. And then these spots get put into what's called uh, aggregator. And in fact, this is the program called aggregator that was developed by uh, the boys at the RBN network. And uh, it's free to download the program. And uh, basically it integrates the uh, data coming from uh, both that single band skimmer I showed you, as well as the Quicksilver radio, the QS1R. And that's what this panel is over here. You can see that I'm currently scanning uh, 17 meters, 20, uh, 30, 40, um, uh, 80 meters, uh, 160 meters, and even uh, 384 kilohertz. I'm also scanning that band right now. All of these spots come out of, uh, come out of this radio and are integrated into uh, this thing called aggregator. And then from here, they are uh, always uh, instantaneously uh, uploaded to the RBN network. Let's have a look at what uh, the RBN network looks like on their web page. If you navigate to the reversebeacon.net uh, website, uh, just put that in your browser and this will take you to the main uh, RBN page. Um, obviously, uh, here you can actually search spots uh, based on uh, individual bands. For example, um, currently I'm looking at all bands. And what's quoted is the data which you would get also from and through the Telnet servers like V7CC in your logging program, uh, you know, where it'll quote the uh, signal to noise ratio as well as the uh, current CW speed. That's a function of the decoding algorithm from the CW skimmer program that Alex V3NEA uh, wrote. But you can also filter here, you know, this is just a sort of an add-on to have a quick look instead of just relying on your logging program. You can even create a filter. For example, you can say, show me uh, any spots coming out of Europe, for example, uh, and who is spotting them? Well, let's say who's, who in North America is uh, spotting um, spots uh, in, in Europe on 160 meters. And if we run that uh, filter, uh, you know, it can be kind of handy because it gives you a quick look of saying, okay, here's the guys that are and who they're here in Europe so kind of a quick look to see you know what's making it through uh, from Europe 
In fact, you can even uh, do a spot search and uh, filter your own call, like, uh, you know, you know, SM5EDX, you know, who's spotting uh, him or who's spotting me. You can put your own call in and just see what skimmers are, uh, are getting you, and, and, and you can see how strong you're being heard in different uh, spots. Here also on the right panel, it'll show you the number of skimmers. You know, there's 176 skimmers currently uh, uh, online. In fact, if I scroll down here to the near, near the bottom, you can see uh, where am I? Here's my call. So I'm currently skimming on 40 meters, 30 meters, uh, 20 meters, and 17 meters. So the point here is, you know, if anyone is going to call CQ in North America, especially, uh, I'm probably going to decode them within 10 seconds, and it'll be spotted, and you will, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be known that there's uh, that someone's CQing on that frequency at uh, at that time. It's a it's a great resource, and uh, I find going to this web page is handy because, um, uh, you know, I'll look at what's coming through on my packet uh, window, um, but you know, this way I can do some specific searches. Hey guys, if you haven't already, and I know many have for years, but if you haven't done it yet, uh, give RBN skimmer spots a try. Get that flowing through your, uh, your logging program. You know, as I said, I really think it can promote and enhance CW activity, especially getting the RBN spots into your, uh, into your flow. 73, Steve, V6WZ.